Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today is the last video in the Buyer's Guide series. We've had a blast with you guys over the last month or so, helping you get ready for the holidays, helping you narrow down your selections. Today we're going to wrap it up, and then after this we're out of the office, we're back out on the water, we're doing stories, we're doing catches, we're doing in-depth teaching. We are back to normal. This final video, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do the top 10 baits of 2018, according to me. Uh, the baits that were the most impactful for me this year. But what I'm gonna do is in each of the 10 categories, so we've got hard swim bait, crank bait, chatter bait, soft swim bait, uh, spinner baits, top water, jigs, creature baits, worms, and then a kind of a combined category because I feel like the baits all fish in the same zone. So swim bait heads, underspins, tail spinners, spoons. We're going to lump all that into one category. Those are the 10 categories. I'm going to give you that tried and true bait that I'm the most passionate about, that I've had the most success with over the years. And then I'm going to give you that one that was impactful this year. Uh, so you guys can kind of compare and see what was trending for us this year, what worked the best, and then uh, go with that. So this is the end right before Christmas. This is the, the end of the end of when you can still order product and get it in time. I believe if you second day, you can still get it, which luckily with Tackle Warehouse, if you're in the western half of the country, that happens automatically. If you're in the east, that's an upgrade, but you can still get it. So this is the last one here we go in no particular order we'll start the closest creature baits my number one creature bait jackal archelon and it's not a bait that i've even thrown for that long i've only thrown it for a couple of years but that's a bait that i just connected with and have been knocking them out of the park with over and over and over and over just a killer bait second up to that the one that was the most impactful this year the man bear pig it started this spring you guys were there when tim and i did a challenge down in the desert in arizona and we both fell in love with that creature bait and we've done a ton with it since if i could only have one creature in 2018 it's that one right there number two worms broad category one bait that has stood the test of time for me is the Senko. But I am going to say it would be the 6-inch Senko, not the 5-inch. The reason why is that I've found over the years that almost any time they'll eat a Senko, they'll eat a 6-inch. I don't have to go to a 5-inch. They'll almost always eat it. And I tend to catch a better fish. So I still catch the small ones, but I tend to catch some really big ones too by going to the six inch over the five. But this year, if I had to pick one, it's that dream shot, striking dream shot. We did so much work with that bait, whether it was largemouth in the springtime when the water was still cold, or drop shot during the spawn, or chasing smallmouth post spawn, and then again in the fall when the fish started grouping up. That was just a deadly, deadly bait this whole year. Had a lot of fun with that one. Jigs. If I could only have one jig, this was hard for me because if you guys have been around more than a year or two, you know that I'm pretty fanatical about jig fishing. It goes in cycles. I have years where I'm all about it and years where I lean back a little bit and give it a break. This was a year where I threw a jig a little bit less, but jig fishing is one of my strongest passions. If I could only have one, it'd be either a half ounce or a three quarter ounce pitch and jig. And in fact, it would probably be in that color right there, go to. Uh, just a deadly, deadly bait. But this year, the standout for me was that finesse jig right there. That one was deadly. And I've had a love hate relationship with finesse jigs over the years. Sometimes I do really well, sometimes I struggle. But this was one of the years where that bait and I just connected and it worked all year long. I had a blast with that thing. Next category, let's go top water. 
If I could only have one, it's the Whopper Plopper. For a lot of you guys around the country, the Whopper Plopper is fairly new. I've only known about it for a year or two. You know in the West, it's been here a long, long time. The Whopper Plopper is just deadly, deadly, deadly. So many fish, so many big fish. Some of the most ferocious strikes I've ever seen from a variety of species have all come on the Whopper Plopper. But again, this year was about experimenting, trying other baits. And not all these baits are brand new. Some of these are baits that we've fallen in and out of love with and came back to them. But the top water that shined for me this year was a Shower Blows. Evergreen SB, Evergreen Shower Blows. You know, there's one, there's one right there hanging on the wall that Stripers just destroyed. Ripped the split rings, bent all the trebles. The Shower Blows was a killer this year everywhere that we went. Uh, it's got that old pencil, the pencil popper profile, hard kick. If you walk it hard, it's a hard kick, big splash, loud noise, but you can slow it down, work it slow, get a little more subtle action out of it. I really enjoyed that bait. All right, that broad category, that spinner bait, or I'm sorry, that spoon, uh, blade bait, tail spinner, swim bait head, that category. My number one is a Blade Runner Spoon. You guys have seen the damage we've done on that over the years, and we did damage on it again this year over and over and over. I love that bait. That particular spoon just loads the boat year after year after year. The other bait this year, I should probably talk about the Man Island Swim Bait Head, but that would be a shameless plug, which we've now got out of the way. So... The one that we're gonna talk about this year is actually this little guy, it's not my head. This is called a guppy head. That one came out this spring. I was waiting on that head. I got word of that head several years ago. Uh, I got to play with one. Uh, I was out in Wisconsin on the Bay of Green Bay. I got to fish with one of those and then they were gone and I didn't see them for a couple years. Well, the guppy head finally showed up in the marketplace. Tim and I got our hands on them. You know that I love that revenge darter head for the 2.8 Kitex, the little swim baits. Tim and I both have had a blast with that over the years, but there were some things about it we didn't like. We didn't like the, the shape of the hook keeper, and the guppy head is a very, very similar hook, different keeper, and it has worked exceptionally well for us this year. And there's one rigged up with a 2.8 Kitex, just happens to be laying on my desk. In fact, it's the exact same one. That little guy, that's a winner. Uh, we threw the Ned rig on it sometimes because we ran out of Ned rigs when we were on a road trip. Uh, done all sorts of things with it. Not just used it as a swim bait head, but that little guy has been awesome. Next, spinner baits. It was hard for me to pick a favorite spinner bait because I've got a couple, but I thought through the actual fish catches season to season, and the one that stood out the best is the River to Sea Bling. I put a ton of time into it. It's guys that fish really heavy cover tend to not to like this style of bait because it's got a flimsier wire. And if you really wear them out, when you get a light wire spinner bait, you can break wires. But if you know when to retire them, lighter wires have more vibration, tend to catch a lot more fish. So that bling has really been a standout for me. Along that same line this year, Staying with that finessier wire where you've got to really pay attention, but they flat catch fish. It's that little Nichols, Nichols mother load. Did damage with that little guy this year. You get a more compact package than a traditional spinner bait. It's not very big. Smaller blades, so it'll run a little deeper on the same line. Tons of vibration because you've got lighter wire. And then it's a package that's easy for those fish to eat. When I pair it up with a swim bait trailer, I don't have a need for a, for a trailer hook. They tend to eat the entire thing and I get them really good. That was a standout this year. Swim baits. If I could only have one soft swim bait, we're going Kitech. And I would probably go 4.8. The Kitech rewrote the book on swim baits and paddle tails over the last few years. It has stormed the industry. It has been one of the biggest baits to ever hit the market. It's up there with the A-Rig, the Senko, the Whopper Plopper, uh, 
those baits that truly changed bass fishing, at least for a time. The Kitek has caught them. The bait this year is not a new bait. It's an old bait. I've gone back and fallen back in love with the Bass Strix. Do you guys remember when these things were on eBay? A pack of Bass Strix for like 40, 50, 60, 80 bucks a pack for a three pack? It was crazy. There was such a rush on these baits and then they sort of faded away. And in recent years, there were some issues there where they weren't swimming like the old baits. Well, they resolved that and they're back to their old selves and these baits swim good. And if your fish are getting tuned to that Kitek, if they see it coming, I've been going back to the Bastrix and catching those fish again. Next category, chatterbait. If I could only have one, it'd be the custom. Done a lot of damage with the custom. But this year, it's that jackhammer. And I was slow to the jackhammer. I'm going to admit that. Tim was on it right away. I was that guy that was like, I'm not paying that much money for a chatterbait. I'm just not doing it. Uh, but it works, and it works so well. I mean, it, it should tell you something. that At the price that that bait is at, that they're constantly sold out. And when you watch, you know, the Elite Series or MLF or one of those or FLW and you see guys fishing a chatterbait and then you look close and it appears that they're all throwing the same bait, that says something to me too. So I finally got on board. There really is a difference. That evergreen starts the fastest. Immediate blade action has great action. You guys remember this spring we did an in-depth chatterbait video. We looked at these baits underwater. There is a difference. That jackhammer is awesome. Crankbaits. If I didn't tell you that the number one was an LV500, particularly Ghost Minnow, you would know that I was lying. That bait for Tim and I both, year after year after year, is amazing. Let's set that aside. The standout for me this year might surprise you. It's that little guy right there. That's a Strike King 3XD. It started this spring. Tim and I were on a pattern. In fact, it was the same day that we were throwing the man bear pig and we discovered that, that that little 3XD stuck a big one for me. And right then and there became a standout. I continued to throw it the rest of the year. And I'm amazed at the caliber of fish that I can consistently produce on that little guy. And it's so versatile, uh, almost like a square bill. I can adjust my line size and really control depth with that bait get it to do a lot of different things. And it's such a small bait that you can catch big ones, you can catch little ones, you can catch numbers. Oh, that was a fun little bait for me this year. Then last but not least, swim baits, the hard bait category. We're going with glides. My number one, as you know, again, Tim and I both, S Waver 168. Coast to coast, top to bottom. If we could only have one glide bait at any price, it would be an S Waver done more damage with that bait than probably all the others combined. Uh, just such a deadly, deadly bait. And if I could only have one, it would be light trout. If I could have two, it would be rainbow trout. If I could have three, it would be warden. And then it breaks out from there. Such a deadly bait. But this year, as you guys know, it started with a review this spring, the bait sanity. Did a ton of damage on that bait. It's a big bait. If you guys want to get into the big bait game, that's a great option at a reasonable price. Now, again, reasonable within the big bait world is relative, but for its size, that is absolutely a reasonably priced bait. I did a ton of damage with it this year. Caught big stripers, caught big largemouth, had a ball with that bait. There it is, guys. Ten categories for you. The tried and true standby baits and the winners of 2018. I hope that helps you. You can still get them in time for the holidays. You've just got to get on it right away. We'll leave you the links to all the gear down below. And with that, we wrap up the buyer's guides. Tim and I both appreciate you guys. We really appreciate you coming along. We hope that these buyer's guides help you. You guys request it every year. So we did it again this year. We had a blast, but it's time to get back to fishing now. So if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.